Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you happen to be, whatever time of day it is, to another episode of Badass Unscripted. Today, let's get frank. Let's discuss why your organization can't innovate, why you can't really compete. The answer lies in the fact that you don't have a culture of getting stuff done. Before we dig into it, let me remind you, you should go to badassagile.com and if you haven't already, sign up for the mailing list so that you can get twice weekly inspirations from my book, Field Notes for the Agile Leader, and you'll have access to my weekly inspiration and mindset videos that come out every Monday. These are the tools, tips, and tricks that get you set up for the week. They get you pointed towards an objective, towards an improvement, something that improves your game incrementally, percent by percent, as you move towards mastery. And that's really the goal, isn't it, guys? All right, listen, all you badasses. Thank you so much for tuning in every week. I love all of you. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you across 77 countries around the world. Now, let's talk about why a large-scale organization, despite infinite resources, access to the best talent, deep, deep pockets, a client roster that would be the envy of everyone in your industry, how come you can't get important stuff done? And what does that do to your ability to compete? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. I suspect from my own experience in working with highly motivated, highly inventive and creative people who have great ideas and massive passion for what they do, I think about what in working with them has stifled that creativity. What's the blocker in going from ideation to implementation? Here are the things that I see over and over. Number one, organizations tend to put too many high value people in low value meetings and activities. There's two major parts to that. The first one is that we assume that the right response to the increased pace of business in our current age is to ask fewer people to do more things. So in an effort to increase the top line and reduce the bottom line, we do something really, really stupid. We try to do much, much more with far too little. We ask people to multitask. We ask people to spend 15, 20, 60 minutes a week on a high grade, high value target. And that makes zero sense. Because if you only spend 30 minutes on something each day, a couple times a week, I mean, it's better than nothing. But that's not true focus. Now, I'm not making this up year in and year out. When different researchers or, you know, the different voices in the Agile community from, you know, the, the state of Agile survey all the way down to the individual practitioners, if you ask them why Agile fails, it's because there's a failure to commit and the wrong mindset. So the failure to commit, to my mind, means a failure to commit the appropriate resources at the appropriate level. That includes financial investment, but also the investment of time into doing things in an agile way. So guess what happens? When you put all those high value people into too many or too many low value situations, a couple things happen. Number one, they can't focus so they can't execute. But more importantly, It's a symptom of the fact that you don't trust teams to make decisions. By taking Mr. or Mrs. High Value Person number one and saying that they must attend 10, 15, 20 different meetings in a day or in a week, you're basically spreading the message that that person must be there to approve all important decisions and they can't possibly make those important decisions unless they sit there and listen to everything everyone has to say, think or feel over and over. That's a huge problem because those high value people need to be left alone to do what they're most highly valued for, which is to create strategy, to run the business, not be in the business as the saying goes, to inspire, to motivate, to lead, to clear blockers, and do the important stuff that we want, open quote, leaders, close quote, to do for us. So what ends up happening is we have these conversations and then we can't get to the next iteration of that conversation for two, three, four weeks. We completely forget what we spoke about last time. We've lost all of the energy and momentum around that last session. And so we basically repeat the same meeting, give or take. And in the spirit of not looking like we completely wasted our time, we'll create spreadsheets full of accountabilities and small markers of movement that include the big long list of the dreaded ing things, thinking, planning, booking, stuff that doesn't move us any closer to done. 
The whole reason why Agile exists is there has to be a better way. There has to be a more efficient way of taking all of that human passion and momentum and connecting it together to create incremental but frequent progress by way of finished work. And by prizing those high-level folks and putting them in too many situations and not enabling teams to make decisions at team level, but rather relying on a precious few people, we completely incapacitate our ability to move. We create a slow, creaky machine. Now, the next thing that we do wrong is that we don't reward risk. We don't even reward the right mindsets about risk. Instead of measuring attendance, instead of checking people's time cards, instead of bonusing them on how many internal training courses they've taken, you should be measuring and rewarding the risks that they take. Freely allowing and inviting failure, but controlling your risk exposure by making each of those experiments small enough that no single decision can sink the boat, you create an innovation culture. There's a saying that what gets measured gets done. So guess what? If all you measure is punching time clocks and attendance in courses and how clean the team lunchroom is, that's the only stuff that's gonna get done in your organization. If on the other hand, you measure and reward innovation, then that's what people will focus their energy on. So once again, what are the big reasons for agile failure? Wrong mindset and failure to commit. This one kind of encompasses both, doesn't it? We're not thinking the right way about innovation and we're not putting the right investment as an organization behind those inventions and experiments. Your job then, as the agile leader, as the badass, is to create living examples of success where pushing decisions down and encouraging experimentation, failure, validated learning, and controlled risk-taking creates massive and visible success and results. So without saying too much more about it, kids, get out there and make that happen today. Find a way or make a way. Be the living example. Folks, thank you as always for tuning in. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for making this show what it is. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass.